Hey everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing our third unit on cellular energetics by talking about topic 3.4, which is in fact cellular energy. And there's a few distinctions that I just want to make in this video and a few points that I want to make about how life uses energy and how energy interacts with life and uh, metabolic pathways. That's also what I want to talk about. So in our first video, we talked about how um, organisms or life itself tends to have what we call pathways, metabolic pathways, which are one thing is converted to the next, which is converted to the next, and which is converted to the next, and so on and so forth. Um, so if you look at this map below me here, uh, this is a metabolic, well, map of most cells. And it uh, shows a very, very general process of about how a lot of different molecules are made. So you got uh, your nucleotides over here, you got fatty acids over here, you got a bunch of uh, amino acids over here, you got carbohydrates. All right, so it's really showing a lot of different, a summary of a lot of different metabolic pathways. Um, and the thing about these metabolic pathways is that they're absolutely essential, and organisms need to be using them constantly, exchanging matter and energy with the environment. But the thing about energy is that unlike matter, it can't be like reused, it can't be recycled. Um, so the thing about energy is that life needs a greater energy input than an output. That means it needs to be taking in more energy from the environment and from what it takes, well, from the matter that it takes in as well, um, than it's putting out. So despite all of these metabolic pathways happening, there needs, the, a life needs to make sure that whatever energy it's using is less than whatever energy it's gaining. All right, so as a result, life needs a constant input of energy, meaning that all life needs some kind of energy that needs to be greater than their output, all right? And here's the thing about energy, too, is that energy is not created, it's not destroyed, and life does not violate the laws of thermodynamics, meaning that energy is only converted from one form into the next. So if we're talking about the laws of thermodynamics here, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy in the universe is conserved, meaning that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, and life doesn't do that either. All life does, just like everything else in the universe, converts one form of energy into the next. So light energy into chemical energy, chemical energy into heat energy, uh, all sorts of stuff, or thermal, I should say. Uh, but yeah, so as I said before, we're in how we make our cells work is through a very, very complicated series of metabolic pathways, right? Um, so energy is required for pretty much every metabolic pathway. So we need to be making sure that we're using this energy efficiently. Um, so because energy can't be recycled, a lot of energy that we take in is released as heat. You know, we're not necessarily the pictures of efficiency when it comes to life. Pretty much every reaction or every metabolic pathway is going to result in some kind of energy loss to the environment as heat. That can't be used, it can't be taken back in, it's just lost to the universe, meaning that uh, it doesn't, life does not violate the second law of thermodynamics either. And the second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy in the universe is constantly increasing, um, meaning that every reaction that happens within a living thing is increasing the overall entropy or the disorder of energy in the universe, which is, you know, it's a little, we don't have to get into all the specifics about thermodynamics today, uh, but all, what you should know is that life does not violate the laws of thermodynamics and we lose a lot of energy as heat. So we, the point is here, we're trying to be efficient with our energy. Um, so the energy from one reaction may allow another reaction that requires energy to occur. So here we have a very simplistic metabolic pathway. A is converted to B, B is converted to C, and C is converted to D. All right, so these are, this is our initial reactant, this is our final product here. Um, and how do living things tend to uh, conserve energy in this way, or how do they use energy more efficiently? Well, it's called energy coupling, the use of an exergonic process to drive an endergonic one. And what are those? Well, I have them defined up here. Um, an exergonic reaction causes a net release of energy, which means it might take a little energy to uh, get the reaction started, but it's going to release more energy than what it used. Um, and an endergonic reaction is the opposite. It absorbs free energy from its surroundings, so it takes in more energy 
than what it releases in uh, or net energy that it releases. Okay, so an endergonic requires more energy, an exergonic releases more energy. All right, um, so if we are talking about this very, very simplistic pathway down here, A to B to C to, to D, what a living thing might do is couple uh, the reactions together. So the, the conversion of A into B uh, might be an exergonic reaction. So I drew some like little flames here to represent energy being released by this reaction, right? So if exergonic reaction is re uh, uh, causing a net release of energy, the energy from that reaction can be used to power this endergonic reaction because an endergonic reaction needs to take in more energy um, in order for it to occur. So exergonic reactions may power endergonic reactions. This energy might be used for this one to convert B to C. And then let's just say uh, C to D is another exergonic reaction. And that reaction will also release some net energy. And this net energy can be used to power another endergonic reaction and so on and so forth. So when we're looking at all these complicated metabolic pathways here, um, again, this is a very, very brief overview of metabolism in the human body or in human body cells. Um, they're often coupled, meaning that they're, the energy from one is used to power the next, and that's called energy coupling. Um, and it makes it very, very efficient uh, for cells to, you know, conserve their energy. So they lose as little heat to the environment as possible because energy can't be recycled. And we need to make sure that our energy input is lower, or excuse me, higher than our energy output. All right, so pathways are sequenced for more controlled transferred transfers of energy. And the product of one reaction is the reactant for another, just like we were looking at before um, when we were discussing metabolic pathways. All right, so that's the points I wanted to make for this video. That is it for this topic. Please let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.